Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Tuem, and today I'm going to talk with Jana Sizikova, a professional tennis player. Sorry that we had to start our life sooner, uh, because Jana will have a practice soon, so that we want everything to be on time. So I'm waiting for her to join. Yeah, there she is. Let's request. Hey, Jana. Hey, Dr. Tuem. Hello, Dr. How are you doing? All good, thank you. And you? I'm good too, thank you. You're in Rome now, right? Yeah. Is it going to be a tournament there? Yeah, it's a big tournament here. Oh, I see. When it will start? Uh, it's already started. Qualifying is playing. So, um, and uh, yeah. when you will have a play, you know that? Uh, not yet. Uh, we're still, we will sign on site. So we will see if we get in tomorrow with my partner. And if yes, we will play either Monday or either Tuesday. Depends oh, on the I schedule. Oh, I see. I wish you all the luck with that. Thanks. And Jana, would you please tell us about yourself and uh, about the uh, experiences you had on the court? Uh, well, nothing, like not much. Uh, I'm from Russia. I'm 25 and I started to play tennis when I was five years old. So, long time. <laughs> Yeah, I lived in Spain for 10 years and I traveled a lot of countries. And yeah, tennis is already my job and my profession and like m bigger part of my life. And which city of Spain do you live now? Um, now I'm at home in Moscow, but uh, I lived next to Alicante for some time. Mm-hmm. Nice. And yeah, still my parents are going there and sometimes I go to practice. So it's a nice experience. Oh, I see. So recently you were in Istanbul Open. How was your experience there? Uh, well, uh, it was not that good as we wished. And the second match was not really great from us. But it's a little bit tough after five months of uh, pause and... We need to get matches to get used to the tournaments back. And now it's a little bit more difficult because we are like staying in the bubbles and we have to make tests all the time. And yeah, it's, it's difficult now. But, but still, I yeah. enjoyed your play. I think it was good. But as you said, maybe the result was not satisfying for you. Yeah, yeah. for sure it was not <laughs> the one we and wanted. Do you follow US Open now? Uh, yeah. And so uh, Azarenka and Osaka will be in final, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So right. what do you think about this match? Uh, it's going to be a good match to see. Um, can't say um, who will win, of course. You never know. But yeah, I think Azarenka is doing really great. After seven years, she was not making any results and she had a baby and then she had some problems. And it's a good result for her. Yeah, it was such a good comeback, especially yeah. uh, when I watched the highlight. The first set, I thought, okay, it's gone, it's finished. But No, 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 but it's because she was always nervous to play against Serena. And... Yeah. yeah, I think that was the reason. But it was a great job from her. Yeah, I was very happy about the result. And Jana, you travel a lot. So uh, how do you like this life that you should travel a lot around the world? I mean, um, it's nice. But sometimes, of course, we wish we could stay a little bit more at home. Not all the time in the planes and the hotels. Everyone is saying that we're traveling and see the whole world and stuff like this. But it's not... It's a little bit not like this because we don't see much. We don't really have time to see a lot of things in different countries. And it all depends on the games. Or if you lose, you go straight away in the next tournament. If you win, you just don't go anywhere. And so, I mean, it's really nice if you have one day off uh, to go and see something new for you. But isn't it possible to skip some tournaments and just go through the, for example, the second best one? Or no, you should participate as much as possible because it's a hard, tough competition. I mean, um, it's not that every week we have tournaments, but 
if you don't play the tournament, you have to practice. And usually if you get some days off, uh, you want to spend them at home. Or if you're practicing at some place, uh, yeah, you can go a few days somewhere, of course. But usually we try to, to stay home, just to relax, do nothing. <laughs> yeah, because practice. you get tired. It's a tough match. Yeah. Even when I played as a hobby, for one day I can't do anything. Now, if you do it professionally, I can't even imagine I mean, what you happens. Get, you, you get used to it, so it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah. And uh, which country did you like the most uh, through this traveling? I'd have to say all the countries are beautiful from some sides, so I can't say like my favorite is of course home. I love to stay in Moscow and Russia, and Europe is beautiful. Australia is beautiful, so you just they are so different, but they all they all beautiful anyways. And is there any country that you wish to visit but you didn't uh, do it before? Uh, well, I would love to go to Ireland. Mm -hmm. That's what I would love to do for sure. Dublin. I have to. Yeah, but we don't have tournaments there, so oh, it's I just see. like you have to go there. <laughs> yeah. Some, what about Cyprus? Point. Have you ever been in Cyprus before? Uh, no, no. But oh, yes, as an option, it's also it's also nice. I don't know if they have a tournament here or no. not. I never heard about it. Yeah, no, unfortunately. No, no, no. I think they had some ITFs there, like juniors, but not yeah, yeah. the professional ones. Yes, unfortunately. And because of that, we usually don't see tennis players here. Um, mm. um, we can go, for example, to Istanbul. And unfortunately, it happened during pandemic. Otherwise, yeah. I could uh, come and visit that tournament. Uh, is it tough to go to Istanbul now? Pardon? Is it tough to go to Istanbul from Cyprus now? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, when you want to come back to Cyprus, then you go to three okay, days quarantine. quarantine. Yeah. Well, three days is nothing. Yeah, you but if you turn Europe out positive. To Russia, it's, for, it's 14 days of <laughs> yes, self-isolation. Yes. So it's not so three it's days. not that much easy, yeah. yeah. But still, you know, you want to get relaxed after your flight. You don't want to go somewhere that you are not familiar with. So it's not yeah. that easy. Yeah. But of course, if uh, this is something you do professionally, you say, okay, I should go there anyway. There's no other choice. Yeah, I mean, we just have um, not so much time off during the the year. Usually it's like a few weeks of holidays and the end of the season. And you just want to go and do nothing, literally. Yeah. And if you're going somewhere, of course, you see some things, but you can only visit one place, like... The way to say no of course you can visit few but it's you need a little bit more time for this yeah of course and uh during this tournament in rome uh your partner again is anna uh no i will play with yekaterina alexandrova oh yes i know her yeah so how do you choose your partner for each tournament um well there are like uh Top uh, doubles players, they're all the time playing together. So it's not a big deal. Uh, but a huge work. Uh, but for us, it's just like um, you start to, to search for a partner a few weeks before the tournament. And you text, you talk with the girls, and you see how, the, how you play. And then you decide if you will try again or, or not, if you're getting in. So a lot of small things. So it depends on many factors, as I can see. It's not easy. Like it's you plan for it for a long time. It's not easy when you are not playing with the same person all the time. Yeah. So do we have such team that, uh, for example, two girls are playing uh, as partner uh, for a long time? Of course. Of course. All the top players are playing uh, with each other for a long time. Yeah, this is a big advantage. So it's of very course. important that That's you can fix someone. That's why they're playing much better than the others. Yeah, yeah. Because it's really hard to coordinate with your partner, I think, if you change yeah, this tournament. It's tough to play every week with someone different. And even if you play two or three tournaments in a row, it's still it's not enough to, to exactly, play well. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. And how was your experience uh, playing with Anna? Um, it's not the first time we played together. Uh, we already played last year, like four times. And we played now two weeks in a row. 
And we also had a chance to practice a little bit with each other in Moscow before the Prague, which were, which was before the Istanbul. So yeah, nice. I mean, so now she will play uh, singles also in Italy, but in Grado. Mm -hmm. And I'm mostly playing doubles now. Uh, is that uh, Prague competition was the one that you played against uh, Safranova? Safarova uh, or Safranova? Yeah, it was not... Safa Safarova, yeah, it was her last Safarova, match yes. last year. Yeah, I uh, watched the match actually. And uh, after the match, uh, the a person came to you for interviewing. And uh, she asked with such excitement that did you know that uh, it will yeah, be yeah, the yeah, last yeah, match yeah. of her? And you just said, yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then she stopped. I mean, she was not really interested in, in my answer anyway. So. <laughs> she was waiting to hear something nice that, yeah, yeah, we had such good play with her. No, I yeah. mean, I didn't even have a chance to say something. She was like, oh, okay. And she left. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> she could also continue to say, okay, what do you of think course. about her? But... Of course. And but I it was the that... only question she did, so it was a little yeah. bit weird. And also you defeated her, so <laughs> it was yeah. a weird situation. She was so happy for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, by the way, uh, who was the best partner for you uh, during these years as double tennis? Can you name someone to say, okay, this was the best time I had with this partner? Yeah, Nastya Patapova. Ah, you enjoyed playing with yeah, her? Yeah, I mean, we're good friends out of court, but I also really enjoyed to play with her. It was a really nice experience for us last year. Yeah, also I could see when I watched your match together, it was showing that you guys had good relation yeah. and it totally worked. Yeah. I and mean, is, it any chance that, is it any chance that in the next tournaments you can also play with each other in the same yeah group. for sure we will try for sure um nastia is still injured and she will only begin her new season in australia so yeah hopefully Not she will this. return yeah and uh, was there any component uh, i mean uh, opponent that you were very interested to play against uh i didn't think about it but it's tough to say because uh, at this level, it's already like really interesting to play against anyone. So, I mean, it's a good experience to play. Doesn't matter against you play. They are all good top players. So it's always interesting. Yeah, that's true. But do you have by any chance any favorite player? Uh, well, um, I love Serena. That's true. And... I think she's amazing. And I mean, now a lot of players are showing really, really high level of tennis. So they are all, I mean, great. <laughs> the best yeah. in the world. So what can you say? Yeah, that's true. It's exciting anyway. Yeah. And um, yeah, speaking of partners uh, in your personal life, as I understood, <laughs> Alexander is your partner. Yeah. And uh, he's also uh, a pro tennis player and he's a tennis coach. Is he uh, your coach at the moment? He's helping me all the time. Yeah, since, since we're together, he was helping me. Sometimes he travels with me on the tournament, but not much because he has to work. And yeah. But uh, when he I, works when in I'm Moscow, back, right? Yeah, when I'm back home, I'm, I'm always somewhere with him. Yeah, it's very hard to be a partner of a tennis player because you guys are always traveling like rocket stars. So yeah. It's very hard. Uh, I totally get it. I mean, but, it, um, it's good that now I'm coming back home. So it's not like before when I was like between the tournaments, I was going back to Spain and I was never home. So this was like a little bit tough. And now when you are out for two weeks and then you come back for one week, it's a little bit easier what i say a little bit it's much easier <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, what do you consider as your power in tennis i mean is there any technique that you think you do very good compared to other techniques uh, we're also different and i mean i can't say uh something that 
maybe I'm doing better than others. We all have some some things which are so different and. But just, comparing to yourself, I mean, uh, if yeah, you compare your backhand to forehand, for example. I love backhand. Yeah, definitely, that's my favorite shot. Yeah, but for I sure. also love your forehand when you do it with two hands. It's very nice. Which which one? Uh, the one that's usually on the back court, you do it very. Ah, powerful. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. very nice. Because in double tennis, the guy is already in front of you, close to the net, so it should be very powerful, so that uh, she cannot return it. Yeah. And unfortunately, in the uh, Istanbul Open, I saw your opponent was using this technique a lot that uh, they wanted to misuse this situation that they uh, sh very shot very powerfully to the backyard. Yeah, but they are both good singles players. So, of course, they they felt a little bit better on the baseline, a little bit more solid. So, yeah, we were not really ready for this. I mean, we're still a little bit out of um, rhythm because they already made some singles matches and they're a little bit more, how to say, used to used to the matches and stuff. And we're miss this rhythm a little bit yeah Need but i i believe you really could beat them yeah it was yeah. very sad moment uh, about stumble open but anyway you will have lots of tournaments i know you will come back much stronger especially now vika is, is inspiring many women now after <laughs> after seven years now she was in final of us open so it was a yeah. great deal nice that's true and which one do you prefer grass uh, clay or hardcore um, I played twice, on, like just two, two years on grass. I liked it, but still I'm more about hard court. If it's mm, the yeah. fast hard court, I love it. I don't yeah, like it's, it's my favorite too, but uh, you know, you pre play professionally, there's always a referee. But when you play it as a hobby, there's no referee and you don't know if the ball was in sometimes or not. That's the disadvantage of it. Uh, yeah, it's, if it's too close, of course. Yeah. Even we when you're playing with problem. referee, it's yeah, <laughs> not always so clear. And if you think about your fun memories or uh, very, uh, for example, good memories from the court, the, is it something that comes to your mind that, yeah, this was very nice memory in the court that I had? Well, the first I, the first I have is when we won the WT title with Nastya. Yeah. So, I mean, it's... These emotions are unforgettable. And how did you celebrate it after that? Oh, well, we traveled the whole day to Yurmala next day, so we didn't <laughs> have we didn't have any time to celebrate. Yeah. And uh, I also wanted to ask you something not necessarily related to tennis, but uh, what do you like about Russian culture? Uh, well, tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I just love, like, I really in love with Russia. I, I really in love with Moscow. And I really like the city. I wouldn't say uh, that all the people are really nice. Because in Moscow, the life rhythm is like crazy, you know? So all the people, they're all the time thinking, they're all the time stressed and not positive and negative and like all this mess you know which happens to people every day especially we don't really have a lot of sun during the winter so also doesn't give you more positive vibes you know but yeah, uh, yeah i mean if it's really really russian people like from from before the elder ones like i really love the mentality like it's it's amazing yeah, actually, I used to live in Moscow for a year. Nice. And yeah, I'm familiar with the situation that you told, especially other Russians from other cities always complaining about the behavior of people in Moscow, that they are all the time in rush. For example, yeah. if they want them to take a picture, then they don't just stop, they just go away. <laughs> <laughs> in Europe, you don't usually see that. When you ask someone, please, would you please take a picture from me? Then Have you been okay. to St. Petersburg? Yes, uh, I was there maybe three times, and for sure it you was loved wonderful. it, no? Yeah. Yeah, it was wonderful. It's amazing. It, yeah. And the people uh, is different. 
yeah, of compared course. to Moscow. Yeah, it's, it's true. And usually I uh, suggest my friends if they want to go to honeymoon, that's the place to go because it's very romantic. Yeah, it's, it's very beautiful. Like, maybe it's even a little bit more beautiful than Moscow, for sure. We, we could say, but for Moscow sure. also has its own advantages. I yeah, love it's the a big variety. city, but St. Yeah. Petersburg is a little bit smaller and it's like everything is smaller and more... Yeah, I, I, love, I love to be in St. Petersburg. It's really nice. Yeah, for leaving Moscow is perfect because each weekend you have a pl new place to go. But yeah, St. Yeah. Petersburg is good just for maybe visiting and relaxing a little. Yeah, it's not so much work in there in general because it's a much smaller city but, and everyone anyway is trying to go to Moscow. <laughs> like yeah. all Russia. <laughs> yeah, that's Not true. only Russia, yeah. Uh, and also, by the way, I visited Egypt because okay. I had a friend there. Yes, I even uh, visited Egypt. I played there when I was 13. 13 years old, yeah. Or something like this last time I've been there. Also, there are some tours around the Russia that you can play tennis as well, right? Mm, no, we don't, we don't have much tournaments. Maybe if it's not pandemic, we have like five. Mm, I see five six during the year so it's nothing for this huge country it's nothing yeah you're right and yana let's do something fun we have a challenge uh, on our page named crazy eyebrow we try to pull one of my eyebrow up one down like this can you do that yeah wow very good both of them wow you're so talented <laughs> <laughs> I'm practicing was, face muscles. You will be surprised. I try it with uh, actors. Actors are perfect with uh, facial expression. They can do anything. But yeah. this, they cannot no? do. No, they cannot do that. No, easy. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. So you are good with gestures too? Of course. Uh, have you done any modeling, by the way? Uh, no, never. Uh, so this uh, eyebrow thing will work for modeling. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if that's the, if that's the <laughs> point. <laughs> and uh, Yana, I also wanted to ask you something else about tennis. That uh, have it uh, ever happened uh, to you that uh, you got very angry and, for example, you broke your racket? Of course, million times. You did it. <laughs> All the tennis players did it at this once, right? For sure. For yeah. sure. Once, for sure. <laughs> How many did you do that? How many times did you? Uh, do I don't even remember. Yeah. But yeah, but when I played juniors, I was breaking them a lot. Now <laughs> less. Yeah, more. I guess we get mature. Uh, I think it uh, happens less. I guess. Yeah, because you already know that it's not because of the racket. <laughs> <laughs> In my case, because I don't want to buy a new one, I control also, myself. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, also. And uh, I don't know if uh, Federer ever did that because he's so calm. Whenever he's playing. Yeah, but he was crazy when he was playing juniors. Oh, I see. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. He was breaking, like, <laughs> Okay, so this is absolutely normal. So, Jana, do you have any message you want to send to your international fans around the world? Uh, well, I um, uh, just wanted to say that uh, even... Uh, through these difficult times, we have to enjoy being at home because at the end, that's what matters. And for sure, we will have enough time to get the money, works, and all this. this. So we just have to be in this and moment how, and yeah. stay with our families. Yes, right. And how they can support their favorite tennis players during this pandemic? I mean, um, tennis associations are trying to help. And especially now, of course, that they started to make the tournaments. As I said in the beginning, we are living like in the bubbles, which is for sure for WTA and ATP, it's really tough to make uh, because we have to have uh, um, the whole hotel for us, you know, and nobody can enter there because we're in the bubble uh, using only official transportations, a lot of stuff working, a lot of tests, everyday, everyday tests and all controlling all this. So 
I mean, it's a great job that they are doing now for this moment with the flights, with the documents. So, I mean, we we are really thankful for this. For yeah, her, I was surprised the way the way they are managing all the tournaments, even during pandemic, it is wonderful. Yeah. And Yana, I know that you will have a practice soon. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for giving us your time today. I know you are very busy these days. No, like, I mean, only just with the flights and a little bit nerves about tomorrow on-site signing. So. Yeah, I really wish you luck in this tournament. Uh, I know you your fans much. will follow it uh, each single match. And we hope to see your, the best results that it will oh, yeah. ever be. I will try. We will try to do our best. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Yana. Thank you so much for your time, for your yeah, attention. Thank, and thank we will you in the... keep in touch. All the best. Sure, of course. I also thank others who joined us during this conversation. Yeah. See you. Paka, paka. Paka. Thanks. Bye-bye.